Now, when we mention about Gayatri, uh, I mean, whenever we go to Kotabarthi, I think we uh, foreigners are very blessed to be given the accommodation in the North Block because every now and then we get the opportunity to pass by the Gayatri Mandir. And we wouldn't, we purposely would take the mandir so that at least we will get that glimpse and to see how Mother Gayatri has been decorated today. Every Friday they will change her decorations. They adorn her with so many uh, ornaments, beautiful gardens, and beautiful saris. I think the aunties would love to see which sari is, uh, what is this Gayatri is actually using today, Kanjigram sari or whatever. So. so, that is the attraction that she has towards all of us. And she has been associated with the mantra. And we call this as Gayatri Mantra. The term mantra itself, if you look at the definition of the meaning mantra, man actually stands for manas, which is mind, and tra stands for tool. So, which is, we are using the tool, the mind as the tool, to get the access of connection towards the higher energy or higher, higher force. That is the reason why we are chanting mantra. Whenever we are coming to bhajans weekly or even at home, Okay, we light up a lamp and we will say a mantra. That is the way that we have been taught to do prayers. Okay, so we chant so that we get a connection between the high. We believe that there is something beyond human comprehension. Okay, and we want to get connected to that. That is why we use mantra as tool. And what is the tool? The manas. Manas is mind. Only through mind we get the connection. Okay, so um, I would like to start. Uh, in fact, I was thinking just now, members, I mean, the devotees were chanting the Gayatri Mantra so beautifully here. And I really should uh, compliment uh, the budget coordinators and the budget singers here. I tell you, you guys are singing with so much of energy and uh, strength and enthusiasm, the way that you clap. And I love the acoustic of this room because that gives so much. Because budget is all about energy and vibration creation. That is why we are singing budget, chanting mantra, chanting Veda mantra, because we want that. We want to be immersed in that reverberation of that positive energy so that we carry all this back and we can contain it for next one whole week and we come back next week and we can recharge again and that's a continuous cycle. You know, our, our energy gets it's just like a battery, like our phone. It just gets drained at any point, at, at any time and we need that recharging method and we attend to such beautiful budget, such beautiful session. I think it's truly wonderful. The mantra says, Gayantam Trayati Iti Gayatri, meaning the mantra itself is a protection. Whoever who chants the mantra, it's like a hello that you have around yourself that it is protected from any negative energy. Okay, beautiful. Okay. It gives us peace, contentment. Uh, you know, it calms us down. We become a composed person. Okay. So these are the various. Uh, what is this benefits of Gayatri? As we hear, you know, some people would have actually shared their beauty. I'm sure many of you have got such wonderful experiences. If I were to listen to your experiences, you know, when I started chanting Gayatri and this and this happened, we would have heard of, of Swami's devotees or Swami students sharing their experiences, cancer getting cancer, because we, these are the experiences that devotees actually experience. Because she is called Sarva Roga Nivarini Gayatri. That means she is able to take away all kinds of diseases and illnesses. She is Sarva Dukkha Parivarini Gayatri. That means she is able to remove all kinds of sorrows and miseries. Such is the beauty uh, of this Mother Gayatri. So now let us look at the mantra itself. So since all of you know how to chant the mantra so beautifully, if you notice that I didn't prepare any slides for today, okay, I think it's not needed, uh, which is why I chose not to pre uh, prepare the uh, slides. Because we all know uh, the words of Gayatri. I mean, if we want to chant the mantra, we should remember the lyrics of the mantra. The first line of Gayatri mantra is only Om. Okay. Gayatri has how many faces? Five faces. Which is why she is called as Panchamukhi. Panchamukhi. Mukhi, mukhi means, uh, Mukha means face. So she is Mukhi because she is a female goddess. Okay. So Pancha means five. So Panchamukhi meaning she has got five faces. The five faces actually represent each line of the Gayatri Mantra. Om, Bhu, Bhubaha, Subaha. That is the first line. The second line. Om is the first line. Bhu, Bhubaha, Subaha. Next line. Tat Savitur Varenyam. Okay, that is the third line. Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi. Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi. Dhiyo Yo Naha Prachodaya. Dhiyo Yo Naha Prachodaya. So that's how we make the five lines of the Gayatri and we connect it to the five faces of Gayatri. Now, as I was mentioning that words just now, you would be going, you would be thinking in your mind, oh, some of the words that he's saying is actually different from the way that I say or I chant. Okay. Now some words in Sanskrit, when you say it alone, they are said differently 
but when you are saying as a mantra, you are connecting it as a line, it is said differently. So that doesn't mean that whatever that you say just now is wrong. Okay? Because I was mentioning, I wanted to make clear of each and every word, so I wanted to say it properly. Om, Buhu, Bhubaha, Subaha. Okay? When we chant it, we will never say Buhu. We will just say it as Bhur. Om, Bhur, Bhubha. Okay? We don't say Bhubaha. Okay? Even though it is spelled as B H U V A H with a dot down. Okay? That is how the actual spelling is. We don't write it as B H U. Uh, 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 okay, with H A, we didn't put the A at the end. Okay, we put H with a dot. Okay, so it is Bhuva, Sova, and it is not Swaha. Okay, let us look at some don'ts and uh, I mean do's and don'ts also here. It is not Swaha, it's not that the, that we are performing a Yajna that every time we say Swaha, Swaha, and we do offering. This is not that. This is Suva. Okay, meaning Bhu, Bhu means Bhu means the physical realm, whatever that we see in the physical state. Next, Bhuva Bhat. It is the subtle face. No, everything has got subtle face, right? Okay, everything has got physical and there is subtle. We are all very engaged to physical. Uh, we are yet to go to that subtle level there. And the third one, Subha is actually referring to Atman, God. So, Bhur, Bhuva, Subha. Bhat. Next line, Tat Savitur Varinyam. Tat meaning that. And who is that? Who is that? We don't know who is that friend. And who is this don't know person? We always connect this don't know person to God. We cannot comprehend or we cannot describe God with any word. And which is why that has been used to describe Lord. They say that it's not enough. Any word that we use also is not enough for us to describe God. Okay? So that here we are actually referring to God. That Savitur, it comes from the word Savita. So many of our sisters here, they have got such beautiful name. So anyone can tell me what is the meaning of the word Savita or Savitur, if you know. Okay, it is actually referring to sun. Sun is so uh, special that sun, one sun has got so many names. Okay, so many names that you know you can refer to sun. You know, Hinduism is one uh, very beautiful uh, religion because it gives such beautiful names and uh, links to many things, okay, to nature. So. So Savitur here is actually referring to sun, but the sun, sun that we are talking about here is the divine sun. Beyond the sun that we see early in the morning. That Savitur, Varinya means adoration. So now we are adoring the divine sun. So that is the meaning of this line. But, and who, who is this divine sun? That is the ultimate divine who, who is formless, that. Okay? Bhargo. The next word is Bhargo. It is not Bhargo. See, in Sanskrit, it is very, very important to uh, pronounce certain words properly. Okay, I'll give you one example. Huh? Have you heard of this bhajan? Very famous bhajan, right? So many times what we do, without we knowing, uh, very unknowingly we tend to sing it as There's a difference between jata dhara and jada dhara. Jata, jata means, it's actually referring to the matted locks of Lord Shiva. You know, he has got such beautiful hair. So that is actually Jada. You know what is the meaning of the word Jada? Jada means lifeless. Corpse, dead body. And we are calling Shiva as dead body. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, unknowingly, not intentionally, we want to make such mistakes. So unknowingly, so that, which is why when we do it wrongly, and uh, these words are actually dispersed to the environment, words are very powerful and they carry energy. And that is why we are actually creating that energy, but it creates a different energy there. Okay? So we will go back to Gayatri Mantra now. So, Bhargo. So, instead of Bhargo, so remember it's Bhargo, the head sound has to be very clear. Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi. Dhimahi. Okay? Now, Bhargo means is the effulgence, radiance. Okay? That light is like super powerful light. I don't know how to explain it. That's effulgence. Bhargo Devasya means divine. Dhimahi means predicate. So now we are we are meditating upon the you know, divine powerful energy light. That is the meaning of this line. And the last line is Dhiyo Yo Na. Just now when I said it was Naha as one word, but when you put it together with Prachodaya, Dhiyo Yo Na Na Prachodaya. Okay, so we put a silent F over there. 
So that's how Swami actually chants. See, we uh, are all Sahaja devotees. All our guidelines are actually coming from Swami. So whatever that we want to do, we want to follow what Swami wants us to do. So we have taken the reference from the way how Swami chants the mantra. And he chants it correctly because he follows the Sanskrit grammar. Okay, so there's certain gra uh, gra I'm not a Sanskrit scholar. I've learned very little, uh, very crash course, I would say that, you know, so that it will help me uh, with charting and all that. Okay, so some of you may have learned the uh, language very well, so you would actually understand why they are, I mean, any any language for the matter, even English language has got grammar that we have to follow. So similarly here, so it applies the same. Okay, so the last line goes like, Dio yo, Dio meaning intellect. Yo, who, okay, na, okay, na is actually referring to us or the prachodayat means illumination. So we are praying for the illumination of our intellect. So, dhyo yo na prachodaya. But when we chant it as, you know, because it, when it is written, it is written as n a h with a dot dhyo. Okay? So, what happens? People have the tendency of saying it as dhyo yo na, dhyo yo na. Abhi now, you know what, what's the meaning? Do not give me any illumination. Now the God is very confused. Should I give you illumination or should I not give you illumination? Because you are, you are chanting the mantra, taking so much effort in chanting the mantra, mantra, but at the end of the day, you are telling not to give me any illumination. See, where it goes wrong. So, which is why it is very important chanting it with the right pronunciation. So, shall we all try one time and let us all, did we get it? So, I will tell you now with the tune also. Just now I forgot to mention about the tune. Alright? We start with Om. Now, when you chant very beautifully, when you chanted just now, you chanted that Om itself as if like one whole line of mantra. Very good. Because every time what we do, we have this tendency of shortening the Om. Om, om is the sound of creation. The entire universe was created with this sound. That is why it's, Om is called as Nada Brahman. Om iti eka akshara Brahman, they say. Om iti eka akshara Brahman. That means if you were to describe God with one syllable, Akshara means syllable. You use the word Om. Okay? So it has to be chanted. So, and the way Swami chants the Om is like Om. That means there is an equal sound in that A Om. Akara, Ukara, Makara. Okay, that is Om. Akara, Ukara. So you have to have the equal sound. Om. Bhur Bhubasubaha. Bhur Bhubasubaha. Tat Savitur Variyam. Indonesian. Tat Savitur Variyam. Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi. Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi. Dhi Yo Yo Na Prachodaya. Dhi Yo Yo Na Prachodaya. Okay, shall we do one more time? One, two, three, go. beautiful divine energy that we are creating over here. So just I would like to run through one more time so that we don't forget. Let us look at the important parts that we have to chant properly. Okay. Om itself, it's a line by itself. So therefore it has to be elongated and chant. Make sure that the A, um, sound are 
it in uh, equal duration as we are chanting it okay in fact when we are chanting not only for the gayatri mantra for that matter and every time when we chant the omkaram that's how it should be chanted so before we begin the bhajan session we chant three times omkaram every day in prashant we chant 21 times omkaram that's how they chant they never do om 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 21 times finish okay let's go back they never do that they will take proper time you know after swami says that you know chanting 21 omkarams is actually chant uh, it's it's a uh, it's an exercise of cleansing ourselves early in the morning because why and swami is okay maybe i'm deviating a little bit but i'll just do it very fast 21 times we are chanting the gayatri because first five times uh, chanting the omkaram because the first five times we are actually chanting for the pancha pranas in our body the five vayus in our body okay and then the uh, five jnani kriyas your senses your five karmi kriyas your senses are your organs of actions and then the last five will be for your pancha koshas the body is actually filled with different koshas, five koshas and the last, the 21st Omkar is actually for the Atman who is within us. So every time when we chant the 21 times, uh, Omkar 21 times early in the morning, that time Brahma Uvatam, that means we are actually recharging, re-energizing the body and we are cleansing the body. We actually, uh, as we are chanting, we know that we are inhaling and exhaling the energy. So we are making sure that good uh, circulation, uh, blood circulation and enough oxygen is being pumped to the brain. Everything is taken care early in the morning. So that is why this exercise is being done. So 21 times, when we chant 3 times, also we follow the same method. So the next line, Ghur, must pronounce the word Ghur with that H sound. Ghur, Ghuva, Subaha, Subaha. So remember it is Subaha, okay, and Tat Savitur, Tat Savitur Variyam. So it goes on a high intonation. Tat Savitur Variyam. Okay, next one, Bhargo, again the H sound, Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi, Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi, Ghi Yo Yo Na Prachodaya, Ghi Yo Yo Na Prachodaya. Just because I say, you know, it's not Naha, it's not Na, and it is Na, you don't really have to, Na, Na, you don't have to. It is a very subtle sound. Okay, alright, now. How do we actually differentiate uh, a mantra, is a Gayatri mantra or if it is any other mantra? There are two words in a Gayatri mantra that affirms that it is a Gayatri mantra. Which means now, we have got Gayatri for everybody, not only for Mother Gayatri, so we have got Sai Gayatri, we have got Ganesha Gayatri, we have got Shiva Gayatri, we have got Krishna Gayatri, Durga Gayatri, Saraswati Gayatri, every special Gayatri is so special, okay? So now, how do we actually know or denote that this is actually a Gayatri Mantra by referring to two words in that Mantra. The two words are Dhimahi and Prachodaya. Whichever Gayatri you can take for the matter will have the word Dhimahi and Prachodaya. Dhimahi means meditation and Prachodaya means illumination. That means we meditate upon this deity. If we are praying to Ganesha, we are meditating upon Ganesha. If we are praying to Gayatri, we are meditating upon Gayatri. So that he, uh, Gayatri or Ganesha or Krishna or Rama, whoever so will illumine our intellect. So that actually uh, affirms that it is a Gayatri mantra. We can chant, we can actually check. Maybe we can chant the Ganesha Gayatri. Whom? Tat Purushaya Vikmahi, Vakratulaya Dhimahi, Tanodanti Prachodaya. Right? We have got Dhimahi Prachodaya. Maybe we can try with Sai Gayatri. Om Sai Shwaraya Vikmahi, Satya Devaya Dhimahi. So many times we will make mistake here, it is Tanno Sarva, because many Gayatris will, but it is Tanna and Sarva is coming together, so that Tanno Sarva is coming together, therefore it becomes Tanna Sarva Prashodaya. Similarly, uh, it happens for even uh, Murugan Gayatri, Supramanya Gayatri, Karthi Gayatri, Om Tat Purushaya Vikmahi, Mahasenaya Dhimahi, Tanna Sarva Shanmukha Prachodaya Skandha Shanmukha We have this and then let's try with um, Let's try the Shiva Gayatri Okay Om Tat Purushaya Vitmahe Mahadevaya Dhimahe Tanno Rudra Prachodaya Okay Then we can try one more with Lakshmi Mahalakshmi Gayatri Om Mahalakshmi Cha Vitmahe Vishnu Patni Cha Dhimahe Tanno Lakshmi Prachodayat So, every Gayatri will definitely have Exactly. I feel like any session would not be complete without sharing a story. 
I like to share a lot of stories, and I like to read a lot of stories, I like to listen to a lot of stories. So I thought that, okay, since everyone's so good over here, so we did not, do we need to practice? Some of I think we'll get tired. Uh, we are good, no? <laughs> so we can go back home and practice, right? Okay, I mean, we are all, I mean, we are all super great. As I mentioned, just now, during Bajan Sitsar, I was noting that, noticing that everyone could chant the Gayatri Mantra so well. Okay, so we will end today's session just by sharing uh, a beautiful experience from a Sai devotee, I mean, uh, Swami student, and I'm sure that all of you know this uh, Swami student by the name of Pradami Deshpande. Okay, if you can actually uh, read uh, some of uh, his sharings or listen to some of his uh, experiences sharing, you, can, you would have actually realized that he had shared this particular um, story, okay, of his. So this is this happened when he was a very young boy, okay. As we all know that, um, you know, in, in those days, to go to Prashantaraya itself, it, it was a very difficult, it was an arduous uh, journey. So, uh, but at that point, they uh, somehow from, if I'm not mistaken, they have Maharashtrians and they are from Pune or something like that. So they have uh, landed in Prashantaraya. And when the first time when they landed there, uh, brother's mom really were very attracted with the Samasthi Upanayanam that is being conducted in Prashantaraya. Upanayanam meaning, you know, the threat ceremony that is done for the young boys, pretty boys. Okay, so in Prashantaraya, it is done in a very grand, it's Samasthi, it's mass. Uh, for so many boys. So when she saw that ceremony was being done, she was very attracted. She thought that my son's Upanayanam has to be done by Swami only. So any mother for that matter, you know, would feel, you know, they'll feel that, you know, my son should get married in Prashantaniya, my son, everything. You know, so, okay, no need, okay, no need to go there. Okay, now, let's come back here. Okay. So it was her prayer. And it just so happened that within few days, they got the chance uh, to get a personal interview with Swami. So as family, they all went, so at that point of time, uh, it was brother Ami and uh, his grandfather, grandmother, his mom and his sister. Only the five of them were there. The father was not there in that trip. So Swami, after you know having casual talk and all that, and asked the mother, anything that you want me to do for you, you can ask. Uh, so this is the time. Swami himself is offering. So why not I use that? You know, he's giving that, you know. So she said, Swami, I want you to perform Upanayanam for my son. Ah, Swami said, okay, okay, no problem. Four days time, we'll perform Upanayanam for you. So now here, Upanayanam for anybody for that matter, I think uh, I think some of you might know that it's a very uh, grand Guha celebration. The entire family members must be there. You know, it's like a big celebration amongst the family members. So now the mother is like, you know, panicking, father is not there, and all the relatives are not there. And Swami is telling that in 40 cents, Upanayanam is going to be done for her son. So practically, she's like, you know, running up and down and calling everyone, gathering all the devotees, I mean, all the relatives coming to Prashant and she managed to do that. Okay, so all of them came, came, you know, from different parts, from Mumbai, from Pune, from different parts of India, and finally they landed in Prashant and uh, the day, the Thursday, Swami said, oh, Swami promised that he would actually perform the Upanayana on Thursday, which is a Guru day, see, and Swami came out, uh, except for Brother Ami's father who was unable to make it, so the rest sitting there with relatives, all things uh, prepared, and Swami has come and completely ignored this group of people. He just, he was so oblivious that he, he pretended as though these people were not present over there, knowing Swami. We would have heard so many stories. Swami always likes to do such things. So he came and he went away. Upanayana was not performed. And so they, were, they are now so worried. And all the relatives started scolding his mother. You know, he must have gone crazy. Swami simply would have told. Swami is such a busy man. One child's Upanayana, Swami, you think Swami is going to do? We are going back. Today he himself, okay? And then they went back. And one of his uncle, in fact, told the mother, everything is ready. You know, the tray is ready, the threat is ready, uh, you know, grandfather is there, grandmother is there, mother is there, Ganesha is there, we can go to the Ganesh Mandir and finish the Upanayana. Mother said no. Swami gave word saying that he himself will perform the Upanayana means he will do it. Swami. So she liked it. So they waited. They waited and waited and waited. They are already coming towards the end of their holidays in Prashant Valiyam. So what happened? Brother Ami and his grandfather had travelled to Dharmavaram to go and get uh, tickets to go back. So they want to go back already. So they have gone. And at the same time, his mother in Prashantaryam in uh, Darshan Hall. And Swami comes out, then he straight to her, Where have you been? I was looking for you. Wanted to perform the Upanayanam for your son. And you just didn't show up. She's like, no, son, you can't even tell Swami. Swami, I'm here. You didn't even Can you? Would you? In first place, wouldn't. So Swami, no, you know, she didn't know what to say. And Swami said, today evening we will perform this Upanayanam. Now again, she's panicking. Generally, Upanayanam is actually performed in the morning only, not in the evening. And she's thinking now, is he really telling that he wants to perform or not now today? Second thing, the uh, grandfather and the son, son, the main person, the Upanayana has to be performed, is not there. He has gone to Dharmavaram. 
So now again, she prayed and then somehow they made it in time. So they were back by 2 p.m. So Swami promised that they, he will actually perform the opening in the evening. So they were prepared. So they went in with the train. In the train they had, uh, you know, the threat. Okay. Uh, what is this? Akshada. And also Kungum of the Vermilion powder. And uh, so, uh, Ami's grandfather had a small container of water because he always had this desire to perform Pada Sevanam for Swami, which is like washing Swami's feet with the water. So they got Swami came and then they called, they went into the interview room. Uh, Swami they didn't use the uh, thread that was brought, Swami materialized uh, his, uh, the, the thread for him. And you know, in the thread, the thread is actually three, three, and each one has got three also. So it's like three, three, three. So that's how the thread is. So, and Swami gives very beautiful explanation to him by saying that, you know, the three, the first one is actually referring to the three murtis. And the three, the next one is actually referring to the three kalas. And the three, the last one is actually referring to the three gunas. Three murtis, we know Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, three kalas, past, present, future, and the three gunas is Rajas, Sattvik, Tamas. Okay? And Swami very beautifully told him, at the age of this boy, is like what, eight, nine, ten. Swami is telling, so you have to pray to the three murtis during the three kalas, so that you go beyond the three gunas. I don't know how much the 10 year old boy would have understood at that point of time, but he's, he's able to repeat that even after today. And Swami performed his Upanayanam and Swami chanted the Gayatri Mantra. When you do Upanayanam, the Gayatri Mantra is the one that is chanted as an initiation for that boy. So Swami chanted and he repeated after Swami for three times. And Swami, after performing, Swami asked, um, So now that you're wearing the thread, you have to do Sandhya Vandana. Sandhya Vandanam, I think those of you who are wearing thread, I think in, in, in these days, I think nobody would want to actually do all these kind of rituals. Nobody have. So knowing that Swami at that point of time itself, Swami said, I know you have to, even if you're unable to do the Sandhya Vandanam, at least chant the Gayatri Mantra three times. Or whatever number of times that you would like to chant. So Swami gave another, another, you know, sort of the discount kind of a thing, you know, you can't do Sandhya Vandanam, at least you chant Gayatri Mantra for three times. And that's how he concluded. And grandfather was eagerly waiting now to perform the Father Sevanam. And Swami said, No. Swami said, I am not expecting for anybody to come and wash my feet with your uh, with whatever water and so on and so forth. What I'm expecting is the tears of joy that comes from you. Okay? How? By following Swami's teaching, by practicing Swami's teaching, you know, when we intensely practice something, do something, without we realizing that the tears of joy actually just come out. And Swami says that is what he, he actually wants from each and every one of us. He said, shed the tears of joy that you get and you practice after pulling my teachings and wash my feet with that tears of joy, Swami said. So I thought it was such a wonderful, powerful message that uh, all of us could carry back home today. It's a powerful message for me also. I should say that once again, uh, indicating times up, okay, I understand. Remember, this mantra is a very powerful mantra. It illumines our intellect. Whenever we feel stuck, do not forget to chant this mantra. I should say, when I was last week, when I was sitting down writing a journal paper for a few days, I was really very stuck. I don't know, you know, sometimes you have a lot of information, a lot of data, you don't know how to put that into proper order, you don't know how to present it properly, I was stuck. And at that point of time, I'm remembering, oh, next Sunday I've got a session to carry out. Huh? Uh, what am I speaking of? Gayatri mantra. Oh, let's chant Gayatri and give me my intellect so that my path over here gets clear. You see how Swami actually comes and works through us whenever it is needed. Not that he wanted me to conduct the session, but he wants me to remember that whenever you are stuck, Gayatri is there to help you. So similarly, you all can use this powerful tool to in, for, for, for us to get better in our life. With that, I would like to thank everyone. Thank you, Jessica.